Today, I will speak on the subject, succeeding in self-employment. Succeeding in self-employment. I'm focusing on two people. My target are two people. Those who are in self-employment and those who are employed, but someday they may wish to transit into self-employment. I'll begin by telling you this. Everything you do as a believer is serving God. On your screen, Exodus 31, verse 1 to 5, we see a man by the name Bezalel. Listen at verse 1. Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have chosen Bezalel, and I have healed him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, understanding, knowledge, of all kinds of skills to make artistic designs to work in gold, silver, bronze, silver, bronze. This guy was anointed as a craftsman. In Exodus 35, 30 to 35, once again we see Bezalel anointed as a craftsman. And then we see another character, or Holiab who had the anointing to design clothes. I wanted to start here because these two guys were not anointed to pray, to prophesy, to preach, to evangelize. Anointed as an accountant, as a pilot, as a dentist. Anointed as a nurse. Anointed for the different things that you do. The Bible says in Colossians 3.17, And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever you do. If you're listening to me today and you're an engineer, you're an architect, you're a musician, you're a salesperson, you're in manufacturing, you're in the agricultural field, in exports. Look, whatever you do in deed, or whatever you do in word, as a counselor, as a speaker, as a musician, whatever you do as a believer, you have the anointing of God. You are anointed to serve God in your career. Ecclesiastes 9.10 And whatever your hand fights to do, do it with all your might. All your might. Many believers still think you're serving God only when you're preaching. And now I'm challenging you that God has anointed you as a designer. God has anointed you as a doctor. Every vocation is anointed of God. Are you with me? Now, of course, there are some pros and cons of self-employment. And when you're self-employed, you are your own boss. Secondly, you can work at your own pace. You determine your schedules. And thirdly, you can experiment stuff. Some products, some services. You may not have experimented in a company as an employee. You can try them out as a self-employed person. Now, I want to share with you four things that would make you succeed as a self-employed person. Most of you know I've never had a job in my lifetime. I've preached the gospel as a tent maker. I have been a trainer. I've had the privilege of speaking in Fortune 500 companies. And every single week, I train companies by Zoom. Most of my online products, some of you have even purchased them. And I've, I have been in this field. I can speak from my own life. And I, I have people who follow me in excess of 100 countries. 1.3 million followers on Facebook. I want to share with you some of the things I have seen work for me. I've spoken in every continent except South America. In my field as a speaker, I can say I have seen tremendous breakthrough. And I want to share with you four things. If I was to tell you four things you need to do to seriously succeed in self-employment. Number one. Number one. Add value to people. Add value to people. By adding value to people, I mean three things. One, solve problems. Solve real problems. Let me give you an example. 
if you sell to me cryptocurrency, like Bitcoin, I may not buy. It may be a powerful idea. And five years to come, I will realize I was wrong. But right now, I do not understand the problem it is solving for me. Now, you don't need to convince me why I need a phone. I know the problem it is solved for me. Without a phone, I can't communicate to my Mercy, to my Ivy, Zig, to you guys. You don't need to convince me. You don't need to sell to me coffee. Coffee makers can relax because I take at least four cups every day. So if I don't understand the problem you're solving, it's going to be an uphill task. So that does not mean you can't introduce something new in the market. You can. But you have to realize it's an uphill task because you are you're on a, in a process of convincing people that they have a problem they can't understand. Are you with me? And you can do it. Elon Musk began to convince us that we need solar cars and people fault him. I mean, why fix it? They say if it, if it ain't broke, why fix it? My gasoline car is serving me. Why do I need a solar one? So if you are going to introduce a problem we don't understand, be ready to stay the course for the next 10 years. By adding value, I mean three things. Solve a real problem, number two. Seek to make a difference. Genuinely make a difference in people's life. If they are coming to the restaurant, they should not leave your restaurant hungry. <laughs> make a real difference. If they buy your clothes, let them feel good. If they come to church like this, let them never walk out in any single service feeling the same. Because you have options for where you could go to church. If they come to your dental clinic, doc, let me not keep coming back every three days. Man, we don't like hospitals. You treat me proper, brother. Carol, I don't want to do my tax returns if you're doing them. If I still have to cross-check again, I don't need you. Make a difference. And number three, love people. You cannot add value if you do not love people. Everyone is a salesman without love. You are a noisemaker. You are irritating to my ears. 1 Corinthians 13.1 If I speak in the tongues of men or ages, but do not have love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging simba. If you are not motivated by love, if you are not inspired by love, you are just trying to make money, that business will not stand the test of time. If I buy a car from our brother Chege, he sells cars, and the car breaks down three months later, trust me, I cannot refer any other person to him. Does that make sense? So add value. Number two. You want to succeed in self-employment? Number two, brand yourself. B-R-A-N-D. Brand yourself. Stand out. Be unique. I can give you my notes right now, but you will not preach like me. <laughs> that does not mean I'm, better, I'm necessarily better than you. It just means I am different from you. Personal branding is not how superior you are from the rest, but it's how different you are. What differentiates you from the rest of the kids in the block? That's what we are talking about. And there are many things I teach a lot about personal branding. Today I want to mention three benefits. Why you need a strong brand. And a brand I mean your name. How known is your name? That's what I mean. How well are you known? Can people recognize you from a distance? You can't force people to like you. Personal branding is people's perception about you. Let me give you three benefits. Number one, you get noticed. Is it not true? You notice a red car on a road packed with white cars. Even police can easily track down that car. Oh, it's a red car. If you look like everyone else in your target audience, your customers are likely to bypass you. You must start out to be noticed so that you don't miss out on your clients. 
Number two, be memorable. And the question is, what reminds people that you exist? What reminds people about you? If somebody has not given me a phone call for five years, and then they call me, I know what they are looking for. They are looking for a speaker. Now, what reminds people that you exist? Now, if I don't know whether you are here, but let me describe you. If you ever quarrel people for forgetting you, you are quarreling someone, hey, you haven't called me for the last two years. Let me tell you, if they have not called you for the last two years, the message is clear. You ain't adding any value to them. Don't ever ask someone, why haven't you called me? Basically, why should they call you? Have you given them a reason to look for you? If they have forgotten you, you have not given them a reason to remember you. So when your blood is strong, you are memorable. Just last week, everybody noticed Beyonce. Whether you follow her or not is up to you. She made a statement. She's the leading in Grammy Awards. You may not be a secular listener. I mean, you may not be listening to secular music, but it's all over news. And you don't dictate what CNN gives us. What makes you memorable? That's the question. And number three, when your blood is strong, you earn more. You are paying more for your individuality. Most people increase their income by increasing the number of hours they work. I'm inviting you to play by a higher platform, to increase your value per hour. Not all doctors are paid the same. They can all see five clients. One takes 10,000 at home, and the other one 1,000 at home. Because their pay per hour is different. For any consultant, whether you're an architect, project manager, marketer, singer, because people are willing to pay more for a known MC, a known singer for their stage appearance, than a name we cannot recognize, a known speaker. So when you're strong with Bradin, and one day I'll come to teach you the whole subject of Bradin from the scriptures. For now, Proverbs 22.1. Proverbs 22.1. A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver or gold. You earn more from your name. The Bible says when you have a good name, you cannot sleep hungry. When you have a good name, you have more than silver and gold. Your reputation is much more important than your job. Why? You can lose your job. But if you're a good accountant where you're employed, someone else will look for you. You cannot get stuck. If you're good in ICT, you are so good in offering solutions. Even if that company fires you, you will be a hot kick up for grabs by the next employer. If you're in self-employment and you deliver, Word of mouth is by far the strongest marketing method. So you write on your name. You want to succeed in self-employment, number three. Be consistent. Be consistent. If people ask you a question, do you still sell insurance? Do you still sell cars? Do you, are, you, are you still doing multi-level marketing? They are doubting your credibility. They are doubting your consistency. You may ask me, how on earth do I become consistent? Pastor, every time I'm starting something, I start with a lot of oomph, enthusiasm, charisma, but I don't sustain it. How do I build consistency? Two things. You must be driven by purpose. The magnet pulling you towards your destiny. And number two, you must be a man or a woman of integrity. Integrity is derived from the word integer. It's a mathematical term for integer, meaning whole number. You are the same face everywhere. You don't behave in a certain way in church, in a certain way at home. No two audiences see different faces. One audience knows you as a saint, and the other one knows you as a drunk. You are lacking integrity. If you are drinking, drink everywhere. Okay? Then you have integrity. Integrity is not holiness. Come on, are you with me? Integrity means 
your character is consistent wherever you are with whoever you are with. You are whole. Your life is not in boxes, compartments. It's a whole number. So be the same to everyone. Jesus never denied who he was, even at the face of the cross. He had integrity. I don't know anything with better integrity or more integrity than fire. Fire burns all the time. Whether you are two months old or you are 100 years old and you have lost your sight. Fire does not care your age. Fire does not care whether it's a waste paper or a degree certificate paper. Fire is consistent. Burns all the time. Anyone, everyone. Fire has integrity and that's why little children by the age of three months, they learn, ah, 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 this one is not like my mother. My mother gives threats, but she never does anything. She keeps saying, I will whip you, but she does nothing. But fire, touch me, you see. I don't care. You're changing diapers. They learn, don't touch. Fire. Fire has integrity. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He changes things, but he himself does not change his character, his values, his principles. Moses told God, teach me your ways that I may find favor with you. What was he saying? Teach me your principles. I need to know them. I don't want to be on the wrong side of God. Teach me thy ways that I may know you and the power of your resurrection. Being conformed with him. Philippians 3.10. Paul said, I want to know the Lord. I want to be conformed. I want to know him. He changes things, but he himself does not change. I go to Starbucks. Why? They, have, they are consistent. It's not rigidity to change. It is the capacity to predict their quality. Not just the quality of the product, but the quality of the service. I know how they smile when I get there. I know how I get that cappuccino, even the packaging. You know, I know some places, they care about the stuff inside, but the packaging. My goodness, we buy the entire ambience. Does that make sense? I'm concerned with the atmosphere of the restaurant, not just the quality of the food. So be consistent, be predictable. The major reason people keep on hopping from one business to another is because they are looking for quick money. And guess what? If you do that, money runs away from you. Money cannot be chased. It's so liquid. It's so fast. It flows like a river. That's why we call it liquid. When you have a lot of cash, we say you're liquid. Don't ever chase money. Money is designed to be attracted, not to be chased. The magnet that attracts money is your blood in private practice. Whether you are a doctor, an accountant, it doesn't matter whether you're an architect, a project manager, a speaker, an MC, a musician. What attracts people is the power of your brand. What's that? How well are you known? You have to introduce yourself to the world before the world starts whispering to each other's ears. Have you listened to so-and-so? People, when they listen, for example, to this message, trust me, when I go back to my Facebook page, I will find a lot of shares. Why? When people get blessed, they share. I don't need to tell them, share the message. Do you get what I'm saying? So I urge you as children of God, perform beyond expectations. Go the extra mile. Exceed people's expectations. Concerning the Messiah, the Bible writes, the zeal of your house has consumed me. He was passionate on what he did. You want to succeed in self-employment? Number four and the last one. Respect your time. Let, let me explain this point. If you are a banker listening to me, working 8 to 5 p.m., people respect your time in the bank. Nobody bothers you. Now, if you are working in the bank in finance or as an accountant, the moment you step out to be in private practice, suddenly somebody's car has broken down. A church member, your sister, your mother, your brother, they call you to sort them out. Suddenly their child is sick. 
They call you to rush them to hospital. It's a nice thing, yes. But when you are employed as a banker, as a waiter in the bank, as a cashier, they never called you. But now because you are on your own, they invite you to solve all their problems. You are inviting them to disrespect your time. If you lag behind in your time, you will lag behind in your bills. So I want to tell you three things about time, and I am done. Number one, account for each day. Plan each day the night before. Plan each week the weekend before. Plan each year the December before. Don't step in and you're surprised by a new day. Number two, learn to say no. Don't overcommit. Don't let your mouth overburden your back. Don't be all things to all people. Let them know lack of planning on their part does not constitute an emergency on your part. That's their problem. The same way when you're working somewhere as in a hospital, in a bank, and everybody respected your time. They couldn't call you that time. They must respect your time in private practice. How you convert this business into a profitable organization depends on how you respect your time. Number three, learn to work offline. When you're working for someone else in a company, in an NGO for the government, you did not pick phones. Why are you picking all the phones? Checking unnecessary was up text. You are, the wa you, you are the watchman for everything that happens on social media. Unless your job requires you to work online. Don't be addicted to gadgets. Don't allow time stealers to sneak through the back door of gadgets. Take care of your time. Are you with me? You see, the Bible says, redeeming the time, for their days are evil. First Thessalonians 4, 11, mind your own business. Look at your neighbor and tell them, mind your own business. Will you receive it? Father, we thank you for your word. We bless your holy name. This morning, we accept your word. And I pray as many as have risen to me this morning, you may prosper them, O God. I speak for the discipline of work. Whatever our hands fight to do, we will do it, O oh Lord, to the glory of your name. If you're listening to me on Facebook, you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I never like closing this service without giving you a chance to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come, come, come to Jesus. There is an open invitation for you. Jesus said, Whosoever shall come to me, I will in no wise cast away. If you want to make that decision right now and turn from death to life, please pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer from the bottom of your heart, your sins are forgiven. You are born again. You are a child of God. Help me to identify you. I have a program to help you grow in your Christian walk. Just write on this Facebook Live, I prayed to be saved. If you write that, I'll reach out to you and share with you some materials to help you grow as a new believer. Just a simple statement. I prayed to be saved. I prayed to be saved. Now church, look at the screen. Let's just remember what we learned. To succeed in self-employment, number one, add value to people. Say after me. Number two, build your brand. Brand yourself. Number two. Number three, be consistent. Number three. So five years later, let me not hear you have tried 20 businesses. Focus on this one thing. The Apostle Paul said, this one thing I do, Philippians 3, 13. This is my one thing. I run with it to my very end. Number four, 
Respect your time. After me? Can I have your answer like this? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you and be gracious to you. The Lord bless you and turn his face toward you. May you walk this week in power, in victory. May you experience God's favor in the course of this week. May the Lord go before you, keep you in perfect health and in perfect peace. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. Amen. Amen. Shalom. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a hearty clap. That was powerful. You know, I'm excited to be here this morning. And Family Church is super excited when you come. Even those of us online, we thank you for tuning in as we learn to find God's purpose for us. Right, uh, we continue to thank you for partnering with Family Church in your offering and tithes. May the Lord richly bless thee. You matter, and what you're going through matters. So please, go to the comments line and just leave us a message. What was your takeaway? You want your friends and family, you want your children and your children's friends and everybody to hear this message. So invite those of us here in Georgia. Let them know they can join with us 10 a.m. to 11. And the address is 287 Mount Calvary Road in Marietta, Georgia. As you go through your week, may the Lord bless thee. You know... I was thinking what Doc says, like to be esteemed is better than gold or silver. That is huge. And you know, it, it makes sense. It's like, what? That was so easy. Like, yeah, why have I never thought of that? But I didn't hear him promise us it's going to be easy. So as we walk out of this door, let us take the courage to be doers of his word. Please join us August the 2nd for that miracle service, a healing service. May the Lord bless thee. We'll look forward to seeing you coming Sunday. And amen. Hey, were you inspired by this video? Kindly like and share with your friends, family and colleagues. And remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. K. N. Jacob, and enjoy hundreds of inspirational videos free of charge.